to make decisions based on purely mechanics without considering our humanness, our experiences, our conditioning, our tenderness is not empowering. To give all our power away to a system that's made us feel seen is not taking responsibility for ourselves. Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves. I'm your host, Jessica Locke, a holistic mindset, strala yoga, and human design guide. This podcast is not about telling you what to do. It's about sharing stories and tools to connect to your inner wisdom and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. Because deep down, only you know what's best for you. We'll be talking mindset, business, recovering from burnout, human design, transitions, and so much more. Let's dive in, shall we? Hello, hello. I'm dropping in for an impromptu episode. And gosh, I don't even know where to start. But I shared a video on Instagram. Thought I would share a piece of it here. Do not give your power away to human design. Do not give your autonomy to this framework. I just saw an ad leveraging human design to find your soulmate. And it obviously triggered something in me because I'm coming in hot. (laughs) Some energetics might look like a match, quote unquote, on paper, but in person they feel off. To make decisions based on purely mechanics without considering our humanness, our experiences, our conditioning, our tenderness is not empowering. To give all our power away to a system that's made us feel seen is not taking responsibility for ourselves. This is a framework, a tool to have more awareness of how we are, our consistent energies, where we hold the most conditioning, our cycles. But that's it. It shows potential, but it's not predictive nor restrictive. It doesn't hold the answers. It's does not guarantee success, satisfaction, peace, or surprise. It does not heal us from trauma, from malnourishment, from toxic relationships. And it's not here to shame or add more to your to-do list. And it's certainly not to be used to outsource our decisions in life. Nothing can do that. We still need to show up to take care of ourselves, to do the work, to make choices, to be in relationship with each other, to embody and decondition. We still need to brush our teeth every day, fold our bed, fold our bed. (laughs) You know what I mean? Eat, sleep, do all the human things. This system is experiential. We learn so we can ground that into our designs and move from there, gathering data on what feels supportive to us and not because someone said so but because we're tuning in the wisdom of our bodies and intuition. Wherever and whoever you lean on for support, don't let it strip you from your autonomy. But instead, how can it bring you a step closer to witnessing your wholeness? And this can be applied in everything in life, whether that's coaching, business, yoga, religion, like anything. Don't give your power and autonomy away. Now, I've sat with this for a while because more kept coming up. Now, let's talk about the other end, the ones that are providing the support and guidance and service, the coaches, the guides, the teachers, leaders, whatever term we want to use. So ever since I've shared that video, I've been getting emails from people who might have not even seen it. You know how sometimes you start noticing things that were kind of there, but not really Your reality kind of reflects what you put focus on. So anyways, emails inquiring about readings, guidebooks, and even my group program from my website. And a lot of them has been about, I've had a reading before, but it wasn't supportive. Or I've signed up from this course. It wasn't what I expected. I didn't get the information I wanted. Like, what program are you using? Because, you know, everybody's giving me something completely different. And regardless of what the issues or miscommunication are, it's reminding me time and time again what the issues 
or you know the ethics <laughs> that comes into place. Whatever our business is, if we are here to provide a service, it is so important to be transparent, to be, I guess, aligned to our values. Like it sounds like common sense, right? But there is a sense of responsibility. And that's not the same, of course, as, you know, being the one responsible for someone's success or change because, you know, that would be taking away their power, right? Right. But more like in terms of ethics and what you're providing and values is what you're sharing aligned to who we are as a human being, to our values and how we want to be treated as a client. I've seen so many coaching yoga spiritual practices become quick cash grabs with no actual value in it or no follow up or like, you know, teasing people enough to keep buying the next thing. It's become another tool for people to make money and not have any accountability, no sense of responsibility and ownership, and instead gaslight their clients into believing that they didn't do the work or that they had false expectations. Look, miscommunication happens. Sometimes people go into one thing with their own ideas and expectations, and we can always try our best to be transparent and meet them about you know, whatever they're expecting, what we're providing. But what I'm talking about here is scenarios where service providers are simply, you know, to put it out plainly, taking advantage of others. And right now, I don't have the answers on how to identify or, you know, how to weed that out and how to know if somebody is aligned or not. I'm just putting the questions out there. How can we be honest with ourselves? If we're a coach, we're any kind of service provider. How are we supporting our clients? And what is the feedback that we're getting? Now, do I get emails once in a while from people that are not happy? Yeah, it's happened with online purchases where sometimes people don't read and then they purchase and get angry, but I do my best to talk to them and see where the miscommunication happened and how we can resolve this because I don't want to take money that is not aligned where people feel cheated. I don't want that energy. Have I suffered some losses? Yes, but that's like less than 0.5% of my total business. You know, my point of sharing this with you is that sometimes miscommunication happens Sometimes someone on the other end might have been too excited about something and leap onto it. But you as a service provider, are you creating the space to set your ego aside and really listen to the people you're guiding and supporting? To listen to their feedback and check in with yourself. What are the majority saying? Not as like a way to stroke your ego, but to see, okay, am I delivering? Am I providing value? Does this feel aligned to me? Do I feel happy sharing this information? Because I think it's so important to not lose sense of it both. Us as a person, what we're doing, how aligned do we feel with it? And then the person that's receiving what we're offering. And not everyone is for us, just like we're not here to guide everyone or to be guided by them, you know, whichever position you're in. That's up to each other to discern, right? But also show up, be responsible, take ownership. Like, are you causing harm? Even if you intended not to or did not intend to do so. If somebody came and said, hey, I felt that. Can you still receive it? Even if it might be triggering for you as well, but also, you know, create the space to see, okay, what happened here? How can we move forward? How can we resolve that? There's obviously specific scenarios where things don't align no matter how hard you try. And again, I don't have an answer on how to deal with them. But as a service provider, there is a sense of responsibility. How are you checking in with yourself? How are you checking in with the people that you are supporting and really listening? Because I've heard so many 
programs and people feeling cheated on. And is that because somebody overpromised? Is that because somebody just wanted to make really quick money and just grab a bunch of online programs to stitch something together with no actual synthesizing value or intent behind it, like with no love? <laughs> and now, if you're someone who's interested in looking for more information, I'm going to talk specifically about human design right now. Check in with yourself and see who are the people you enjoy learning from. What feelings come up? Make sure, you know, and that's something that we practice and that's something that we hone to discern. Like, oh, is there any shame coming up from these teachings? How do I feel about this information? Is it landing with me? Because everybody has like a different approach and frequency. Trust yourself if something feels off for you. It could simply mean that this person is not someone that it feels good for you to learn from. And maybe others feel better for you. Like use your discernment and stay in your autonomy. And whoever you choose to have a reading to be your guide or learn from, you get to be picky too. Don't do it because the price is cheaper compared to someone else. Don't do it because, you know, oh, this just happens to be the right time, but I'm not sure about this person. Like this, again, can be applied to anything and everything in life. Coming back to our centers, how can we ground ourselves and see the opportunities that are present? And what is the energetic exchange required? Does that feel good to me? Does that feel aligned? As a client or as a service provider, I think that's at least a good way to get started. Does that guarantee success or that, you know, there will be no hiccups along the way? I don't think so because life is unpredictable. And whenever, you know, two different energies come into connection, Stuff happens. <laughs> but how do we ground into ourselves? How do we stay in our power? Ask for what we want, what we need. How do we talk? How do we mediate? Some questions to contemplate on. <sighs> Thank you so much for listening to the very end of this episode if you've made it this far. There are so many nuances and it's such a fine line between giving our power away, owning our autonomy, between guiding, supporting people and not taking their power away at the same time. I don't know how to best put that into words yet. And I'm sure that there will be a lot more reflections and lessons even later on. And I might re-record this or bring a 2.0 version of this but I just wanted to bring the sentiment out there the importance of not giving your power away as a coach as a client as a human being in owning our sense of autonomy and staying grounded in ourselves within it all as we learn to navigate these tricky paths of what it means to be human, right? <laughs> to learn and grow and heal and all the other things that we get to do. So thank you so much for being here today. And it would mean the world to me if you would rate, comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to this podcast. And let me know what you think of these episodes so far. Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. If you're feeling pulled to get into action and want to connect within, check out the Align and Embody journal on wholeandunleashed.com. You'll also find resources on mindset, human design, and archive for past episodes of this podcast. And if you've enjoyed this episode, please share, leave a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day wherever you are.